if I was gonna do a behind the scenes, here are some of the production based King of the Baggers race weapons. A lot of these just came off the track. This one here is based on a Harley Davidson bagger. This is the Roland Sands design, Indian Chief based. Just like the old days, it's Indian versus Harley Davidson all over again. Let's take a walk around through the pits and check out some of this awesome machinery in here. Well, you gotta have the pit bike to get around here, so lots of pit bikes, lots of Groms, different types of scooters, so mini road racers, whatever it takes. Wouldn't recognize this looking at it, but this is based off of the Harley Davidson dual purpose bike. It's a 1250cc V twin. Not sure of the horsepower rating, but they fly. Doesn't look anything like the factory bike, but the frame and engine are. This is day two of three days of racing here. We've got the 600s and the, and the baggers. That one right there is an Aprilla, Italian machine. This one's a Yamaha. Guys, this is my friends from Canada came down and they, they just qualified. You, how'd you qualify on it, was it? Uh, he got fourth in uh, qualifying B. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's fast. Yeah. What was his top speed, do you know? Uh, what was your top speed? 156.7. 156. 156.7, that's moving. Things happen fast at 160 miles an hour. Yeah, especially when you got the uh, winds coming right in front of you. Uh, the, fastest, the fastest I've ever gone on a bike was 145, and that was on a long straightaway on the street. So they, and I've never gone quite that fast, but I, I can only imagine, especially on a track like this, must okay. have been awesome. So you're, you're asking for my time, or you're asking for my top speed? Top speed, yeah. 175. 175. Yeah, now that's really fast. <laughs> that, that is, oh, I thought you meant miles per hour. How's the bike? Everything worked out good? Fantastic. Yep. So you qualified fourth, huh? Fourth and second. Um, second qualified, but uh, overall 29. That's awesome. And we're happy. 29 out of 52. I'll take it. We well, wish you the best of luck tomorrow. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it. God bless. That one right there, the Aprilia. <laughs> You're gonna send it tomorrow, take it out in the 200? The factory. Beautiful bike. KTM. Never do come to Daytona and camp out here. I can't stress the fact you gotta have a motorcycle or one of these golf carts over here to get around because everything at the track is like a half mile away. We'll literally put 30 miles on a, on our pit bike here during the weekend. So unless you want to run the Boston Marathon, that's the way to go. I had to do a video of this. Look at this thing, black and white. I'm not sure what it started life as, but I'm guessing a a, a road glide, but. It is set up for taking out on the track, it looks like. Look at the suspension. Wow. That is freaking beautiful. Just beautiful. That is one cool looking bike right there. Beautiful looking road king. Nice. Hi, so I'm here with the owner of the bike and he just told me these are alloy art forks, which I've, I've never heard of before. They're definitely artwork, just beautiful. Yeah, little brakes on there too. Rambo brakes. 
What kind of wheel is that? That was a uh, stock stock wheel. The, uh, is it really? The Enforcer. It looks freaking awesome. Yeah. And yeah. that's an alloy art. That's the name of the company. Yes, sir. Do they have a website or something like that? Oh yeah. yeah. Alloy art. Just beautiful. Is the motor uh, built on it too? I'd imagine. Actually, the motor's stock. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it's ready to take on the track with those forks and shocks. Does it handle light years better than it did stock? Oh yeah, what is that? Wow. And these are the Olins. Uh, are those the, the, the Screaming Eagle ones you can order from Harley? Yeah, yeah. What are they, 14s or something? Yeah, those, well, so those are 13 and quarter and actually made from uh, this extension right here. Yep. It's a one inch rise. Okay. Uh, made by, uh, it's a woodfire, but it's just the words, so. It's really, really well done. And yeah. the color combos on point too. Kind of speaks to its heritage of being a police road glide originally, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, police road king. Road king. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. a road king. Yeah, yeah. So, um, also make uh, two up. Uh, so, by two go drop and punctures, we make um, two inch extensions for those. Uh, those risers, do you, uh, who made those? Uh, death Metal Racing. I'm sorry, one more time? Uh, death Metal Racing. Death Metal Racing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are those, tens? Yeah, those are eights. Eights? Yeah, yeah. Just four inch rise on the Freaking beautiful, man. Really nice. I've seen so many nice baggers here down at uh, Destination Daytona's really taking it to the next level. I think the king of the baggers racing really inspired a lot of this, uh, yeah, for these sure. parts and everything. Yeah, I'm wondering if Harley's ever going to make a production king of the bagger bike. That'd be really, really cool. Yep. That's badass, man. Freaking awesome. Do you part the Red Sea going down the highway with this thing or what? Uh, Everybody pull right over. If you want to get somewhere fast, that's a way to do it, right? Yeah, right for sure. That's just awesome. Thanks, man. It's carbon fiber front fender with a paint yeah, on it. Like so you build these for the public too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of them built. Go to Space Coast Speed. Go to Instagram at Space Coast Speedworks. I'll check it out. Yeah. That's my next. My next big investment will be a, a, a custom road glide. Guys, if this bike looks familiar, we uh, actually filmed this last year at one of the races. He just came off the track today. Had a little bit of an incident. Uh, went down. Uh, what'd you, you hit some oil or something? Hit some oil in the track. Yeah. That can happen. And took out took out some of the components on this side here. So what happened? The clutch blew on it. Yeah. So today we were going uh, coming out of the barrel corner. Yep. And went to shift up, and it went, and there was nothing there. Oh man. No transmission whatsoever. So, that was the end of the weekend. That's a pretty big job on this engine too, right? Huh? On this motor right here, it's not a separate training, so you got to pull the whole thing oh, apart. Yeah. No, you have to split the case. Yeah. And get this yeah. Star yeah. shifter out. Yeah, yeah. The ship, yeah. The ship drum that that exploded. We have to split the case and pull the transmission. How was it? How was it going until that happened? Was everything going good or? Oh uh, yeah, we got up to about 141 miles an hour. That's moving. Moving on a Harley. Hell yeah. So having a blast. That's cool. Um, first Moto America event. Yeah, what's, what are your plans? Are you following the whole series this whole year? whole series this year. So we're going to hopefully get it all fixed up and uh, get it out to the ridge yep. and then Laguna yep. and then Coda as well. For awesome. Sure. Awesome. Yeah, bike looks awesome. Have you done anything to it since last year? That Have you changed anything on it? We switched uh, over to full K10 suspension. Yep, yeah, I see that. Look at that, huh? So, so we got the suspension all dialed in for this weekend. And uh, it was riding amazing. Um, we went with a 
a hammer 1275 kit and cams with oh, wow. so we beefed it up a little bit more. How many horsepower do you think it's putting down? 114. That's pretty stout for a light bike. Yes, it is. Well, light. It's 500 pounds. <laughs> well, for, for, compared to the, for, compared yes. to the baggers, I guess. You know, yeah, for sure. Those are more like 670. So, yeah. Now, uh, big engine changes and suspension changes for Roto America this year. Yep. Um, oh, we also had to go, I don't know if you guys remember, but I had clip-ons on it. Okay. Before. That's right, yeah. And so we had to, for the hooligan class, we had to go back to the upright bars. Okay. Which is new because I've never had this bike with upright bars, even though it came with them stock. Yep. It was always a clip on bike since I've had it. So, so do you change the whole fork set out on it? Yep. We had to switch to the XRX forks so that we could get the K Tech internals. Okay. Is K Tech one of your sponsors? They do. They do spot. Awesome. Uh, Oriental Express and K Tech USA. Amazing suspension for sure. Do you have the parts to fix it at home, you think? Or, or? Um, we actually, uh, somebody came up and offered to get us a case yep. for, the, for the clutch side because yes. it did damage to the whole case in there. Yep. Um, and then we're going to have to start getting parts and uh, get, put them together yes, now. Yesterday, yeah. we'll start getting parts and putting it together. When's your next race? Uh, the next race would be uh, in June with um, Auto America at the Ridge. Oh, cool. So we have two months. I'll be racing in the meantime, I race flat track and uh, race it on my KTM uh, in Arma. Yeah. So, so I'll be doing some other racing, but Keep for this, sharp. we need to get this thing back together and uh, hopefully we get enough time so I can do a track day or something before we uh, get it out to the ridge. This started life as a XR1200 and uh, what, e what year? It's a nine. Oh nine. And now it's a 1275? Yes. Awesome. So really, uh, you've done quite a lot of mods. Uh, the full suspension, the motor, everything's been done on it. The top, the top and lower triples. Triple from, plan, uh, another sponsor of this, which is uh, Free Spirits. Nice. And so this decreases the rake by a full degree and a half. Oh wow! So much better handling from uh, the Free Spirit uh, triple. It turns better now. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and on a stock, you have to get put 17 inch wheel on the front, which also helps a whole bunch with yep. the turning. Yep. The, the, the wheels. Um, that was probably the single biggest modification of this bike that, have, that was the, the best modification. Um, putting the lighter wheels on here and the smaller front wheel. Forged aluminum Marchesinis. Yep. Really nice. Eight, eight months to get them. You had to order them direct from Marchesini? No. Yes, sir. They look beautiful and the black and gold really pops. Yeah. No, I love those. Um, yeah. Bike's super sharp. You must be bummed that the training went you. I'm sure you're excited about being out in the out in the I was, track. I was, uh, I was running third when it popped. Oh man! So, how was how did last year turn out for you? Uh, with uh, this bike went off and was being worked on all last year. Yeah. So I was continued to race my uh, my KTM. I also raced the KTM in the twins class and the national number two in the twins. Wow! And I ended up with another national championship on the. Uh, in the Sound of Singles one. How many championships is that now? That's two, two national two. championships. That's two more than most other guys have. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite an accomplishment. Congratulations. I started doing this and playing this game at 47 years old. Hey, that's inspiration for us old guys, huh? Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> it, it can go. You that's can still go fast. How old do you know? 53. It's keep, and I just got my pro license. And it's keeping keeping you young and uh, sharp. And heck, to start at 47 and then win a couple national championships, that's impressive. Were you riding dirt bikes your whole life or something? Or? I've, rode all, I've ridden all my life, yeah. So you've got a lot of hours yeah, behind the bars. Sure. Uh, that, that's what that's what it takes. Well, hey, I wish you the best of luck hey, this year, man. man. Thank Always you good very to much. See you. Always good to see you as well. Casey. Good to see you, Casey. Good luck, guys. So, guys, you started racing at 47. Tell us a little bit about what your thought about that. <laughs> so... Um, Somebody, I had bought this bike and it was still stock and a friend of mine said hey we're going to do a track day you want to go and I said sure and so I had done two or three track days with this bike as a stock bike yeah. and uh, my wife and I came here to the 200 that year and she goes you should see the look on your face you need to do this yeah Six months later, I had my race license uh, with Arma and started racing at 47 years old. Uh, 
it's a slow curve to get started, but I practice. Uh, and then what I started doing was I started doing hair scrambles and enduros to have more practice, more seat time, yep. learn how the bike can move underneath of you. Yep. And since then, I, I started getting better and better and better. And then I started doing flat track because why? Well, it's got two wheels. Let's two, try that as well. Sure. And it's, the training is just as many as much time as you can get in the seat. It's just and, and it's put the smile in my face hurts some days from smiling so much. That's awesome. Uh, it, you know, and so it's not about how old you are. It's how you feel about doing what you're doing. Get out there, make it happen. Uh, nobody else is going to do it for you. So it doesn't right. matter how far you get involved with it. Just have a good time. Smile. Just push yourself to wherever you can. So. That's awesome. What an inspiration for us older guys to see someone uh, in the 50 plus crowd out there kicking ass, winning national championships. And and now you had mentioned next year you might actually do a double header here at Daytona. Yeah, and uh, we talked about it this year. I was thinking about doing the flat tracking and doing the Moto America run as well. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a goal. You know, I'm not sure if that's maybe too much. We'll be but, here to film you if you do it next year. You got my number. Call me. I appreciate <laughs> it, man. All right, man. Okay. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you very good, much. Good luck you to you. Have a wonderful time. God bless. Change the calipers. It's a quick change calipers. That's a hot rod diner right there. It's badass. And the road glides, of course. What's that one on the far end there? It's one of them uh, new. It's a, yeah, it's, a, it's one of the new Harley Davidson. That's a Pan America over there. That's the next target life has. They don't even look like a Pan America once you strip them down. I think they look much cooler once you set them up for road racing. Oh, yeah. Beatrice, come here. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Moto pump. That could risk Moto Guzzi. It's beautiful. Is that a factory paint job on there or is that some? Yeah, that's factory, yeah. V85. Very cool. What's your name and wh where are you from? Robert Johnson from Mystic, Connecticut. Oh, we're, shit, we're neighbors. Uh, you're not far from us at all. We went down. We always get out to the uh, aquarium and uh, the Mystic Seaport and everything down there. Yeah, yeah. How long are you down here for? Just a weekend. Just a race weekend. Then you got to go home. So yeah, like yeah. We'll drive it slow. Wait till all the bikers leave and hang out on the beach for a day. Excellent. So this started life as what model? Uh, it was a 2017 Ultra Classic. So you, you stripped it right down to the frame and, and did everything to it, huh? So I bought it on eBay as a powertrain. Yep. It was in a cradle that had the neck chopped off. Okay. And I paid to buy an out price and they threw in the neck for me. And you put the whole thing together? Yep. Went to the dealership, got a frame, put it all together. That's awesome. Yep. Was this your first time uh, uh, to Daytona with it? With this bike, yeah, I've been here before in the past with other bikes. So how was it going uh, other than the fuel? Um, very well. We've had some issues with uh, screw eagle parts that have been kicking our butt. Yep. Can't play. Um, it was kind of losing its momentum, but other than that, uh, been running really good. Been running with teams that are spending probably seven figures. That's awesome. What's the top speed on a bike like this on the track? We were hitting 158. That's flying, 160 miles an hour. Damn. Yeah. That's moving. Motor. That's awesome. Hats yeah. off, man. Yeah. Are you going to be racing up in uh, Laconia during uh, this bike week? Or is there anything going up there for the this league? No. Yeah, we'll be doing the Moto America series primarily. So, excellent. When's your next round? It will be Road Atlanta at the end of April. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hopefully I can get down there to check that out. Yeah, yeah I see your YouTube videos all the time. I enjoy it. Seeing oh, those old bikes. Thanks, so short. Yeah, fun playing with, with all kinds of bikes for sure. Yeah. But I'm really intrigued by the whole uh, Bagger Racing League. It's just amazing. I've been around the Harley scene since like 1990. I got my first FXR. Yeah. And this level that, that you guys are taking it to is just just uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, this is basically, it's a street motor, it's like an aggressive street motor, and it makes uh, 160, 160. Coming out of the International Horseshoe on the first uh, outing lap in the second year, you just rip it and it just wheels. 160 horsepower, how many cubic inches is that? It's only 124. 124. Yeah, so I'm down seven cubic inches compared to my competitor. So it's got some pretty stout cams and uh, valves and everything. It's got uh, complete custom throttle body, manifold, that 
do about 30 more CFM than er everything else I've tested on the market. You do all the work yourself on the bike? I did the fabrication to everything. I did the triple trees myself, the rear sunk frame, the swing arm, did all the wiring, made all the bag mounts and stuff like that. Yeah, did everything. The only thing I didn't make are the uh, valves, pistons, and the belly cam. That is impressive. Uh, are you an uh, engineer, machinist, or something like that yes. by trade? Yep. Yeah. Figured that much, yeah. Yeah. That, this isn't something somebody normal guys gonna do at home in their garage, you know. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. I don't have the money to go buy all the parts like some of the other teams do, so I kind of uh, just do it at home with a little milling machine and well. Did you engineer the whole subframe and everything? Yep. That's really cool. Looks factory. Yeah. Thank you. So you're going to be racing in New Jersey in April on this bike, and I heard that you'd be racing against the Jap bikes too, which yeah. is. Must yeah, really freak fun. those guys out when you go ripping by them on a Harley, on a yeah. bagger, nonetheless. I'll be racing against R1s, G6, R1000, ZX10s. I, I got to see this. I definitely want to come see that. That sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. Yeah, it, and the fun thing with this is it will hang on the straightaway with the ZX10. It's incredible the level that it's been taken to. Hundred. Yep. So uh, it's, it's a little heavier than the GSXR, obviously, right? So. Yeah, without the bodywork, without any weight on it, it is 560. It has more torque than an R1, though, I'd imagine, right? Oh, yeah. It has 164 pounds of torque. What's an R1 putting down, do you know? I think uh, the last one that I dynoed was in the 80s. So double the torque. Yeah. So that, that's the key. That's why it's wheeling it at uh, such high speeds. Yeah, and that's the fun part. Is we're not allowed in this series to have any traction control. Yep. So you got to have a smooth, smooth wrist. Very cool. So what are your plans for tomorrow? Uh, I gotta figure out why I have an intermittent power issues with my fuel pump, and then yeah. hopefully go out and do a couple of races. Well, hey, we wish you the best of luck, man. Thank you very much. Making nice making Connecticut proud. Keep up the good work, man. Yeah, and, and good luck to you out there. Thank you very much. The Olin's here doing the uh, suspension conversions. Pine Stars here with the boots and riding gear. The 2022 Lowrider ST, just like mine, but this one's been all hooked up with the Baja Designs headlight. And what kind of what kind of uh, running lights are those? That? What kind of? Oh, it's the LP4. And then, LP4? Yeah, front, and then, you know, the Baja design as well. But you're excited to take it out tonight and see how bright yeah, they are, huh? Right. You, you got PM uh, wheels on this, too? Uh, yeah, the performance machine hooked it up. Got Pro-Am wheels, mashing rotors and everything. Really nice. Can't, can't go wrong with You got the pegs. Yeah. You went to chain drive already? Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. What'd you do to the engine? Uh, fueling 472 PM kit. Did you dyno it after after you did that? Yeah. What's it what's yeah. it putting down? Right now it's at like 114 and like 132 foot pounds. Nice, nice. But I think once I got a throttle body in here from the HPI, it'll get a little bit better, you know. I'm trying we, to get to 120 We uh, done we dyno mine stock, it was 91, so you're you're up almost 30 or 25 percent or something. Yeah, something like that. Let's we'll see how it goes. Looks really good, all blacked out. And the black chrome is Bisani. Really slick. Masani, uh, is that a Road Rage? Uh, yeah, the Road Rage 3. Really nice. How do you like it so far? I love it, man. I mean, I had the 2020 Lowrider S, and then, yep. like, pretty much, like, I just needed the bags and everything, and I got a good deal on that, so I was just like, fuck it, I couldn't. Nice sound system, too. Yeah, it's not, the, it's not the Harley stock one that they, like, send, but, like, Flex Audio, I shoot for them and stuff, so they hooked it up. Very cool. And uh, the other ones were kind of hard to get for a while, so... That one does good for me. For you got now. grips, levers, risers, all the goodies I want to get for mine. You know what I haven't found? I have the same um, highway, I call them highway pegs because I use them as highway pegs, but my feet kind of slide off of them yeah. a little bit. These are a uh, Fox Fab Moda. They're out of uh, Colorado. Yeah, mine, looked, mine are by Bung King, but they look very similar. Yeah. Do your feet slide off of them? Not so much. Is it, this air cleaner doesn't stick out as far? The, the, the stock air cleaner like pushes my leg off of it a yeah, little bit. This one's the fueling. They just came out with this. How many miles you put on it? Shit, I'm at 31. Yeah, I, right I, I just broke 2,000 on mine. How do you like it compared to the uh, the other lowrider? I mean, I love it. It's just more so like you know having the bags and everything and like uh, bearing better. It's like uh, a it's like a performance road king basically, right? A road uh, road uh, glide. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, you feel, it's in between stage, you know what I mean? You're going to like a dyna, to like a road glide or something, you know what yep. I mean? It's kind of like a nice in between stage, so it's not, I'm not on like the bag daddy light yet, you know? But yeah, I'm, I'm, even though I'm 58, I'm not sure if I'm ready for a bagger. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good stage, you know, in between.
stuff you like nimble and stuff you know? i had a 17 lowrider st the last year the dyna and sold that and then i i uh got this one so far so good well thank you for yeah. sharing sharing with us no problem, pleasure to meet you yeah, dude. i'll tell telly you said hello yeah, sure. take care this bike right here started life that bike right there pretty cool